Good evening and welcome to the Modus Super Series. It's the evening session on day four here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. This is week two of Series 3 and Group B is about to get underway this evening. But before we do that, let's have a look at what we saw this afternoon as Group C got underway. Here's Chris Murphy. Group C started with six players bidding to join Leonard Gates at finals night. Luke Getty, it won't be you. He was thinking, get me out of here after losing all five fixtures today. It might be Gary Hayes, the ADC qualifier, eventually finding his feet to stay in with a shout from four points. Legendary lobber Larry Butler also won two of Thursday's fixtures and remains in with a chance of making the all-important top two. Callum Francis kept claiming 4-3 wins, three of them in fact, to help the debutant to third place overnight. It was almost four from five for Francis, but this big finish from Conan Whitehead saw the Barbarian bail himself out of bother for his third win in the group. But it was Golden Brown as John Brown stole the show, going through the field undefeated and for the loss of just four legs. So, and that was how Group C finished. Scott Mitchell is with me for the evening session. We'll be getting his analysis on all the action coming up in a little while. But before we look ahead to Group B, let's round off the Group C table at the halfway point because it was a fantastic day, a perfect day, as far as John Brown was concerned, winning all five matches. And as Chris Murphy said there, dropped just four legs. Two of them were actually in his last game against Luke Getty. So, actually, against four of his opponents, he actually dropped only two legs. Conan Whitehead is in the lead in terms of the race for second place, which is probably the battle we're going to be looking at tomorrow. Callum Francis is also on six. They meet in the first game of tomorrow morning's session, which will make Gary Butler and Gary Hayes interested spectators on four. Let's have a look at Group C in a bit more context then by having a look at the numbers for that particular session. 15 games played, 85 legs played, a checkout ratio of 31.72%. Luke Getty, the player at the bottom of the table, actually got the best leg of the day with an 11 data, a 1 Six, seven from John Brown being the highest checkout of the lot and an overall average just under 82. But Scott Mitchell is alongside me up here on the balcony for all of the action that is to come in Group C. And we're looking forward to this, aren't we, Scott? We are. This has been the tasty group. We've all been here looking forward to this one. The introduction of Adam Hunt. What more can you ask for? Indeed, we're going to see him in action. We're going to see Colin Osborne in action. That's actually early on in the proceedings. That's going to be some Northumberland battle. Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're the Southerners down here, and in the players' room there, we're, we're the ones with the wrong accents. And, of course, we're going to see the likes of Prakash Shearer. Well, Collins move into this group this evening. What are you expecting from them? Well, I think some of them got a tough task. It's going to be how those first games go. You know, that the game kept the whole evening can be dictated on how that first game goes. So... I'm looking forward to see how they go. I'm looking forward to see how some of them handle it. And I suppose when we get back up here after game five, we'll know a little bit more about where people are going to be. We most certainly will. Let's see what the bookmakers make of things then. This is the betting outright. Colin Osborne, the two to one favourite. Adam Hunt, five to two. They square off in the first game of the evening. Owen Bates, seven to two to go on and win the group. And a lot of people are saying that's probably the free to prize apart. Uh, probably is. On, on paper, you would say that that is the case, but we know that Prakash and Rob have, have got a great game. It's whether they can get them out against some great players that they're up against. This is, this is the group that it could go either way. We could see a lot of people on even points for a long, long time in this group. Let's have a quick check of what you think is going to happen tonight with Scotty Dog's tips. And you are expecting a lot of tight tussles tonight. Yeah, I'm not expecting the first one to go, you know, be about four, two, six legs. Second one, you can see there, the same. And the third one, well, I think that's going to be over six legs. So that's why it's priced as it is. And that is 5.14 to 1. If you do want to have a flutter, it is 18 plus and it is BeGambleAware.org. Well, our first match of these is the two favourites of the group go toe to toe. It's Adam Hunt up against Colin Osborne. Colin we saw on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday in Group A. He wasn't too far off qualification. Snuffed at the line by Leonard Gates, who we're going to see here on Saturday. And he takes on Adam Hunt. Debut for him here in this competition, having dropped off the PDC Pro Tour at the end of 2022. And before play got underway this evening, I caught up with Adam to gauge his chances ahead of the occasion. 
Adam, welcome to the Super Series. First experience on this stage. What's your first impressions? Yeah, I really like it. Um, I think I was just saying there, I think it's like a, a, like a mini Euro Tour stage. Uh, I had a throw on the throw before. It's a really good throw, so yeah, it's, uh, it's decent. What's your new experience for yourself in this in environment, playing obviously lots of games and that? Is this a, the sort of thing you're looking forward to, you've got to embrace the next couple of days? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, there's uh, four good players in my group. Um, obviously, it's it's quite... Um, you're going to be playing every so often, you know, every, every half hour or so, so it's going to be quite uh, quick and intense, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That relentless format, I suppose it's quite similar to a pro tour or an event if you keep winning because you're always on and off the board. So I suppose it's not too dissimilar in that aspect. Yeah, well, I didn't win many games on the pro tour last <laughs> year, but uh, when I played on the youth tour and the challenge tours and stuff like that, it was very, very quick. Um, so yeah, it, it should be quite similar to that. Have you set any goals and expectations this week or are you just willing to let this kind of go one game at a time and see where you go? No, I, I, I want to win this week. I want to win, get in the Champions Week. Anything less for me, I, I think so. Um, you know, a negative, so yeah, um, hopefully get off to a good start tonight and take it into tomorrow. Do you feel there's a little bit of pressure on yourself? So you've dropped off the tour at the end of 2022. Do you feel like there's a natural little bit of pressure here for yourself or not so? No, no, I'm uh, since I've lost my tour card, I've been playing some local stuff, playing mm -hmm. well, so I'm just here to enjoy it, but obviously competitive stuff, yeah, I think I, I, think I can do it this week. We look forward to watching you play. Adam, Cheers, mate, thank you. Cheers. Here we go then, your Thursday night tungsten tussles begin here as Colin Osborne takes on Adam Hunt. And to describe all the throws, all the drama for you this evening is our ace commentary team with the 2015 BDO World Champion Scott Mitchell and the former Premier Inn champion, here's Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Henry, for the big build-up, myself and Mr Mitchell. We'll do our best to live up to it and cast our eyes and analyse the action this evening, what I think is going to be a very entertaining evening of arrows with five really good competitors going head-to-head -head across ten games tonight, another ten tomorrow. Adam Hunt making his debut, Colin Osborne, one of the most regular faces at the Super Series, the seven-time PDC ranking winner. Scott Mitchell has joined me just saw that interview with Adam Hunt and I found it interesting to say, you know, he feels, it reminds him of a, a, a Euro Tour stage. It's been quite some time for Adam, even though he was on the Pro Tour last year, just qualified for one of those Euro Tour events and played one match. So he's only really played on stage once in the last year, First a big reason why he's ended up losing his Tour card. Game on. He's going to do it eight times over the next couple of nights and he's one of the big favourites to come through. Yeah, and probably quite rightly so. Um, you know, the rookies 18. know what they're doing, but uh, it's, it's a difficult thing when you drop off. We, we've discussed it already this week, and uh, he's he's sort of grasped it by the sound of his interview, and he's gone to local comps and 96. not tried to hide away. Um, and, and sometimes going to those local comps, I did the same, and uh, you, you kind of realise how well you were actually playing. You know, it, it, your standard hasn't dropped off. It's just you've been unlucky in a few places, and I'm looking forward to seeing how Adam fares in this group. Yeah, it's a fierce field, the pro tour, but equally 59. difficult here at the Super Series. I think he's in a very difficult group, and he's got probably the most difficult match. First up, favourite to win the group, Colin Osborne, a man that Adam Hunt has never beaten as well. The pair have met twice, and on both occasions, including one on the Challenge Tour just last month, when Osborne whacked him 5-0. Uh, even though Adam's just come off the pro tours, and, and I know this sounds really wrong but 100 he would look at this in the same as i would look at this and say look i've just come off the pro tours if i drew any one of these guys on the pro tours i would i would be happy with that 100. draw compared with who's in the room so i think he has to look at it in that way and propel himself forward because i think that's what john brown did this afternoon yeah good point well made as always from scott mitchell who will be with us all evening and all week, in fact. 140. Right through to finals night on Saturday when somebody will claim the £5,000 first prize. Leonard Gates, the only man already there. John Brown as good as there after winning all five of his matches this afternoon. 43. Colin your car, 106. 106 to break in leg one. Double top will complete the combo. Game shot on the first leg. Colin Osborne. We saw Colin do this in Group B, uh, Group A, sorry, uh, earlier in the week. And uh, second leg, Colin. He'll be pleased that he's broken Adam 
early doors. Yeah, he played some really good stuff, didn't he, in Group A. Actually had the highest average of the group and was tied on 96. points with Venegate. Lost out on leg difference. His average across his 15 matches marginally better than that of Leonard Gates, but very much has been a man of 100. near misses at the Super Series, Colin Osborne. Produced a good standard, but for whatever reason, whether it be luck or something more than that, has just struggled to get over the line and, and win a finals night in this 26. setting, that is. Oh, you won't be happy with that, was it? 100. Because he opened the door there for Adam to jump straight on that score, which Adam did. And that have a bit of support from the ADC, Adam Hunt. I know that his brother Scott is very involved in that setup and plenty of 100. starts, particularly in the northeast. Fifty-eight. I like to look at the the face of the new boys when they walk in this place for the first time. It's a uh, it's quite eye opening. You see it on the TV and and you can't believe how good it looks on the TV. And it's even better when you get in. Yeah, very different scenarios for a lot of players as well. I, I really think that's one of the sixty common your interesting car, features and dynamics of this event where you've got some players like Adam Hunt who are coming off the tour, you've got people like Colin Osborne who've been there and done it and got the T shirt. And then you've got kind of complete unknowns that have never experienced that yet. And they all start with three darts in their hands. One hundred and twenty no points on the board. Indeed and another Great short iron into the green there from Colin Osborne. 96. Common your car, 32. Looking comfortable, Colin. Adam still finding his feet. Game shot well, on the second Disappearing lane. quickly Colin in the Osborne. quicksand as Osborne doubles his lead in the match. Adam won't panic just yet. He won't panic just yet. He's got his throw now. And he will like Adam to expect to hold it. Game on. He's an interesting case study, Adam Hunt, because he won a plethora of One development to a um, challenge to a titles. And we've seen other players that have got similar hauls to him, six in total in those secondary tours, gone and really become top dogs in, in world darts, in the elite, the top 10, the top 16, a couple in the Premier League and things like that. But Adam has never really made that, that journey from sort of boy to man. And that's probably the wrong way of putting it, but he's never taken that next step up as he's had to step backwards a couple of times. But they've not been big backward steps, in my opinion. You know, it, 97. It, it, they've been more of a of a halting of going forward and, and, and a plateau in flat rather than going backwards. Yes, it always feels like you've gone backwards when you've lost your tour card. 93. Um, but I don't think that's because his game had gone backwards. I think that the, that the Pro Tour level had gone up a little bit. And, and, and I think that he he would be back there. There's no doubt about that. One it's just, 40. again, you a little one bit one like Josh Payne. You need to come off, settle yourself, and go back in again. And I think Adam's going to be one of those. A double four. One out of the Would have got him off the mark in sensational style in this match. Colin Osborne, not really in this leg. But yeah, I think it's a good point. Not everybody's progress can be linear. There are another 127 players on tour trying to all improve as well. And somebody's going to finish outside the top 64. Somebody's going to finish top. Eight. Well, it's a bit of a dead cat. 180 that from the Colin leg. Osborne. Adamant. He left himself on double 13, maybe just to get the big call from Paul Hinks. But it didn't phase Adam Hunt at all. Fourth eight, Colin to third first. Game on. Forty-five. So a chance here early in leg four for Adam Hunt. One hundred. To punish a slow start from Colin Osborne.
177. Well, the slow start has sped up, hasn't it? Brilliant, 177. 45. 97. Started to be prolific on that treble 19 with his last start. On his last two visits, Colin Osborne. 180. 180 in from Adam Hunt. 58. But not on this occasion for Osborne. On the treble 19, it eluded him. So Hunt now, we want another one of those. That one's a bit wild. 66. Coming your from car, a treble 20 with his first visit, he will be disappointed with that Adam Hunt to only end up with 66. So it's Osborne. 124. That's not going to go this time either. But he could leave it handy with his short irons once again on his way in. 74. Decision then on 110 for Adam Hunt. 19s, I think, is going to be the starting point here. 91 remaining. So we saw Colin Osborne, didn't we, earlier on? Sorry, Colin, Colin Osborne. Conan Whitehead earlier on go for the bullseye on this. don't think Colin Osborne will be employing the same route. Out of your class, 63. wondering if that first dart there at the Big Ten in the Colin Osborne's last dart. It's 19 now for tops. 23. Colin your class, 20. That's how Osborne returns. Game shot on the fourth leg. A good Colin chance Osborne. for Adam Hunt to go level there. Colin Osborne got away with one. Fifth leg, Adam to throw first. Game on. One hundred and seventy-seven. A start from Adam Hunt, and he needs these kind of darts. Osborne getting away from him. Difficult match for him to start his campaign with, but I don't 58. think he'll be too bruised. He has grown into the game, Adam Hunt, and even if he is beaten by Colin Osborne here, he's got to fancy his chances in his final three. 134. Did uh, Henry push you for a, a prediction on which three you think are going to come through this group? Yeah, I think we were under both of the same opinion. We think that, you know... 48. Hunt, Osborne and Bates will probably come out of this group, but I still think Rob Collins and Prakash will not roll over. 120. Well, has been in good form recently, and Rob Collins is one of those players who can turn up one night and lose four matches, turn up another night and win four matches. Really enigmatic. Colin, you will Arrow Smith. 161. Eighty-nine. Adam Yukar, one hundred and fifty-eight. So I think he'll stay there for the one five eight. Didn't quite come across. 81. Come out. Colin Yukar, seventy-two. Loose one there with the last one from Adam. He'd have liked to have tidied that a little more, but Osborne on seventy-two after twelve against the throw. Double 12. Game shot right the in the Colin corner. Osborne. It's game shot and match to Colin Osborne. Exactly how Paul Hinks has said it. Os opens his account in Group B with two points. There we see the average. 96.58. Not too shabby at all. And 57% on the checkout. Higher shot, 106. So we head into the break. And coming next will be... Prakash Jawa 
and Owen Bates. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Colin Osborne put in a fantastic performance to start things off against Adam Hunt, 96 and a half average in a 4-1 win. Next up for us, we're going to see Prakash Jiwa for the first time this week. We saw him at the Super Series just for the World Championships at Alexander Palace. He takes on Owen Bates. The Masters plan after this is going to be a first appearance at the Players' Championship. But anyway, enough of that. Let's get into the action here at the Super Series because we're looking forward to this one and we are going to watch it in the company of Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Yes, indeed. Owen Bates might be quite grateful of the earliest start time on Saturday nights here at the Super Series because he can win this and then head up to Barnsley to play in Sunday's Players' Championship event as one of the reserve players, having performed well on the Challenge Tour uh, in the early part of the season. He takes on Prakash Dewar's Henry just said, who played here before that World Darts Championship debut. Didn't go great for Prakash. Lost out to Madis Razma, but always going to be a tough draw. Did get a set in that one, an average of 86.19 as well. So certainly didn't seem overawed by the occasion. First. 
and it's all good experience for him coming into this week. So, Colin Osborne off to a strong start, 4-1 against Adam Hunt in the meeting between the two favourites to win this group, who will emerge 16. as the danger, the dark horse, we'll find out over the next couple of matches. Gwer against Bates, and then Hunt returns to face Rob Collins. One out of them, 40. And by the looks of things already, Owen Bates has started the way he left off. One out of them, 40. Yeah, had some great moments in Group A. Owen Bates was right in the mix for top sport until, well, the last round of fixtures, really. One out of them, 40. Which was a very tight group that did go all the way to game 44 or 45 before we knew who was going to come out on top. It's turned out to be Leonard Gates. He's got a really watchable throwing style. Very consistent, very 43. rhythmic, very repeatable. You, you wouldn't see much going wrong with that over time, would you? No, not at all. It's like I say, it's nice and straight up. 41. Straight follow through. Everything you'd want a young dart player to have as part 60. of his throw and part of the repertoire. And the repetition of his throw. And can he master the Top player from India. 100. In this one. Colin Ukar, 118. 118 to take the first leg against the throw. But he has to hit this to get a dart at double. He's stepping across. Couldn't get it. It was an alternative route there. Prakash Ukar, 68. would 60. have been bold to go 48 bull, but if he feels he can't hit the treble 20, then worth a go. Well, this is. Different. 20. Oh, when you were class 60. Well, it seems like he likes to throw that <laughs> first dart nice and high and use the dart. And yeah. Owen's throwing his traditional, we now know, flat dart so that he can get over the top of it at 40. the double top. But he was not successful 40. this time. So Prakash comes back. I need some protection for that 20 number if it's the same as before. He's taken a right chunk out of it. Double 10. 20. Oh, you a car 20. Same target for Bates. So it's double five. One up, one in. Two. No. Prakash, you a car 20. Friendly start from these two in leg one. You know this is going to go in, don't you? Oh, well, well, on average, it's gone in that because it's missed by the same margin either side. Ten. Or in your car, ten. I think it's safe to say that he's struggled to settle here, Scott. Indeed, he has. No score. Prakash, you will class 10. 15 darts missed at double already. Double five. That's a wire bender. He gets all three darts. No score. Oh, but there's 18 darts missed in one leg. And we could be on for the wrong kind of record if this Being one doesn't go in. Leg. Oh, in Bates. Bates puts an end to the madness. And I think they will both be pleased that that one's out the way. Second leg going to throw first. So they can game. get on with the rest of the game. It's quite strange as a player when you have one that keeps going like that. It's It, it can get in your mindset 45. a little bit. Go on, mate. Go and get it. No, you get it. No, you get it. And and it just went on and on there. Well, we've seen a lot of darts this week, but I'm pretty sure Owen Bates was involved in a similar leg on Monday, and he won that leg. If I remember right. I think it was a 30-dart leg. I think he got it with his last dart. So... As we said then, it's all a point 
on your score sheet. 59. And those scrappy ones where you have loads of darts at a double, when you don't win them, you don't get those points back. One hundred. Prakash Jiwa did have some time on the PDC 44. Pro Tour. He did get a, a tour card back in 2015, 2017. Played in almost 130 82. players' championship events with little success, but has had the odd run as far as the last 16. He did reach a quarter final. 89. In Coventry now. Nine years ago, beaten by Peter Wright on that occasion. Who else was in that quarterfinal? Richie Housen, who made it to the World Seniors Championship final at the weekend. Seven. Forty-three. I think we've got the, the situation here where Both players are struggling a little bit. They know they're there to be taken in the way that they're playing and scoring. And 54. Both are trying just a touch too hard to overcome the other. There's no, no, no real flow and ebb to the game just yet. No rhythm. 91. Well, every player that comes Back here knows that they're capable from anywhere of hitting anything. And I wouldn't be surprised to see one of these two finishers go now. It won't be this one. He's going to do the next best thing and leave it handy. 83. Owen Bates, a man who we've seen take out various big finishers over the course of the week. Needs one treble 20 for the ball. Not to be. 94. Prakash Yorkar, 75. Probably going to look at treble 17. Ah, I wasn't expecting that either. 35, Oyu Kar, 36. Well, to be fair, Scott, and I mean this, I don't know if I should say this really. Game shot on the second leg. Shall I? Owen Bates. Oh, okay, I'll say it. I'm not sure, based on what we've seen so far, that he didn't go for treble 17. Third leg, Prakash to throw first. Game on. I would, I would, I would highly disagree. I think he went for the fifteen, the treble fifteen, but I don't ever think he thought he was going to hit it. I think he was 100. just trying to get one dart at it for me. Yeah, tongue was in my cheek. Sorry, Prakash and Prakash fans, if you watch it back, couldn't resist. One hundred and forty. But it is an unorthodox route, isn't it? That it is an unorthodox route, but I can see maybe where he's coming from going that way. But I don't see many players do that. That's that's what's caught us out. 140. Yeah, I can't imagine Scott Mitchell employing such a tactic. I couldn't I couldn't take the hammering from the commentators if I went that way. 96. So uh, no, I probably probably won't. Maybe, maybe on a jovial day I might do when I'm trying to amuse myself there. Well, we saw some good stuff from Owen Bates, but he's sort of been caught up in this. Bit of a fiasco of a fixture at the beginning. 81. That all those missed doubles may be causing a, a little bit of a hangover. We'll leave something nice here. Something very nice indeed. 71. Go high, Prakash. 160. Oh, and that was high, four. high, and high again. At least he's at a double now, Scott. He has. 54. And if it's another one, in half the deficit Prakash in this match with 20. a 13 data out of a clear blue sky. Double five again. Which you know he's not keen on. Ten. Or and still not keen 40. on. Yeah, it's, it's not just the misses, is it? It's the margins of the misses for Prakash Jiwa here. He's really struggling to 
20. make the necessary Why adjustments. Can't you walk on a it's one of those situations where I feel he's just got to get a leg on the board to settle himself down. And well, folks, it's on the big number. The single one moves double two. Well, it, it's becoming difficult Six. to watch. He really hasn't oh, settled. Car 20. What can he do in this situation? I mean, I, I, I don't even want to Game put the question the to you, leg. Scott, because I can't imagine you've been in such a situation. No, not in this situation. And, of course, he's only going to get a game or two where there's only five in the group. He's going to be back on quicker than he would if it was a, a six-person group, a Ball player group. So first. Game on. Well, there's only one stat that really is going to tell the story of this match. One on the and it's that one. 15 darts at double. There might be players that go through this evening without 100. having many more darts at double than that. No, indeed. And like you say, he's an ample opportunity. 81. If he, misses, if he misses one more dart at double in this match, they've had enough darts at double to win all four of his matches. One hundred. Scoring side of it hasn't really been the problem. It's in the doubles that has has killed the average. One hundred and forty. You can see that there as well. Owen Bates, bizarrely, 5 one forties, no tons. Absolutely. And 180 in there as well. Famine or feast for Bates. But as you say, the, the scoring segment there, Owen that's Lucar, 100. his 11th score of more than 100. But Owen Bates, who hadn't hit 100, takes out 100 to win the match. And it's a very good leg of darts, 11 darter, but Prakash Jiwa, well, he's going to have to go back to that practice room and sharpen up his doubles because not only did he miss those 15 darts at double, he missed them by a mile. And Owen Bates is the beneficiary, winning 4-0 in his opener. Coming next, Adam Hunt looking for his first win and a first outing of the night for Rob Collins.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Owen Bates has won well. Quite a bizarre game against Prakash Shiba by four legs to nil. 26 missed starts at double in four legs between the pair, but it was Bates who got the victory 2 nil. Uh, next up for us is Rob Collins against Adam Hunt. Rob, the last player this week we're yet to see here at the Super Series. We're going to see how he shapes up against Adam Hunt, who's looking to get a victory to his name following his opening match against Colin Osborne. To watch this one with us in the comments box is Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. So Rob Collins comes into the fray, the 43-year-old from Bognor Regis. PDC Challenge Tour event winner in the past. And a definite man of steel taking on hometown boy from Chester La Street. The age of 29, Adam Hunt. The play you'll probably be looking on here and you would be saying... Adam Hunt's already had a game and Rob Collins has come in cold. That can be the case. But of course, tomorrow when the fixtures are reversed, Rob Collins will come in and get a couple of games before somebody else. So it all evens itself out here at the Moda Super Series. Every scenario thought of and why the groups are set up like they are. First leg is Rob to throw first. Game on. Pauling's getting the action underway. The referee for this evening. And yeah, Adam Hunt has had that game to try and warm himself up. And I think he did that, to be fair. He was fit, beaten heavily by Colin Osborne. But you could see a marked improvement in Hunt's performance as the game went on. And I expect to see much more like the real Adam Hunt in this 100. one. 100. Not like the two players don't know each other. Been around the PDC circles and Rob in the past has had guest appearances 100. on the Pro Tours. One hundred. Adam starts very similar to a both sets of dart players really have got little bulbous novel on the front of their darts. Very, probably first seen a la, a la Dennis Priestley style dart. Have you seen with popular players back in those days? 100. Youngsters like Adam and, and people have gone on and used their darts and then been signed by a dart company themselves and a slight variation is made. I wonder how many variations of a Bristow dart have ever been made. Yeah, and it, it seemed to, you know, a layman like me that it wouldn't make that much difference, but it can, can't it? A small modification to the darts you're used to throwing make an awful lot of difference. Well, even even if you take a groove, say, from the front of your dart and return it to the back, for those that use that dart all the time will know that it just changes the balance totally so the dart will enter 42. the board at a different angle. Your, car 24. your muscle memory is not used to that, but it's double 12. Incoming for Adam Hunt. No score. Rob Wilcar, 70. Great approach play from Adam Hunt in that leg. Specifically the 177 to leave the double, but Collins has a chance for a clinical kill. Excellent. Excellent stuff from Rob, Rob Collins, Collins to take the opening leg. Second leg, Adam, to throw first. Game on. A bit of a gurn at the board there from Rob Collins as he took his dart out. 59. 59. Hands at the hockey. What we call a 45-degree angle with his feet. He is one of those players who really can play like a, a rocket or a broken down car, Rob Collins. Sometimes he's absolutely mustered and wins all four matches when he comes in, just averaging around that 100 mark. Other times he can struggle. But he is a player who, still, you know, he works in a physical job, steel erector. When he arrives here, he's always already done a full day's work. I know something you'll be used to. 
93. Yeah, very much so. We were both back on the Challenge Tour in 2020 at number one and two uh, when COVID struck. So when we were playing behind closed doors, Rob and I had an awful lot of chances um, at the Pro Tours, which we appreciate. One hundred has played ever since the start of the Super Series. Rob Collins, as you can see by the shirt, still got the old uh, live league badge on it there. One hundred and forty. Could be a lucky shirt, and that's why he's worn it. We you, you, making all these assumptions here. Forty-seven. Rob, your car seventy. Now the Super Series, and he's made a super start to tonight's action. Well, that one is a little too high. Is We've seen it? a bit of that tonight. I think they call that a touch north. He was almost in Newcastle. Adam will come out now and hit the big 14. So, and your pressure on this Rob Collins tops here. Game shot on the second leg. Rob Collins. Well, the good thing about being in Group B, I suppose, rather than Group C, is that you do have a little bit more time to grow into it. Three players go through from five. So, so if one or two get away, Game on. it becomes a battle between the bottom three for that third spot. So Adam Hunt has no need to panic, even if he does lose his first couple of matches here. 58. And I do think that's all part of the settling in. You know, Adam knows he's got supporters at home that are watching 16. him. There's other guys from his area in the group, so there's a good chance that people are staying up tonight to watch. He just wants to put a good performance in for himself 100. more than anything. One hundred and twenty five. We're disappointed, weren't he, with how this game has gone because he started that first leg very well. He laid up for the twenty four with a superb one seven seven, having hit a treble in every visit of the first leg. And we can see Collins pick his pocket with a seven six. That would have seen Adam Hunt a break up immediately. Instead now he's facing the prospect of 58. being three nil down. One hundred. Eighty. Collins has been Robbie solid. One hundred and eighteen on this throw, this leg, and his throw rather than spectacular. He has the spectacular chance. It's double nineteen. Eighty. Well, nothing. Adam can do, but hit and hope. 140. Robbie will cross. He hits and leaves the same target. Collins going straight for it. Might be able to bounce that off that barrel. Oh, he's decided to split, so he didn't like the lie. Interesting, interesting choice 10. from Rob Adam Collins there. 38. Don't see that very often when a player misses with a first start to split with a second, but Collins did. And Adam Hunt, is that in the 13? So he decided Game to split. Shot on the third leg. Adam and then Hunt. in the end, he did hit. Bit of, bit of luck there for Adam Hunt. Ball yeah, indeed. Adam throw first. I, think, I think with Adam, his, his game is based on that first dart being in the right place. And we've 93. seen him be a little bit wayward with his first dart, which is why he struggled to make any impact on the scoreboard. But 46. I think he'll take some heart from taking that third leg. But there we go again. It's first one's just a little 85. bit wayward. When he gets the first one right, the next two come in pretty quick fire. Not Ricky Evans speed, but no slouch still. Adam Hunt with the pace of, of how he throws. I think it's all about that first start with him. 
That's a lovely dart. Here we go. He'll follow that. 171. Thank you, Adam. My theory, you have just proved. I made it look like I know exactly what I'm talking about. 123. Of the finish. Not on this occasion. By the way, I know a few viewers might be just tuning in, having watched the Premier League darts action this evening. What you've missed so far is a 4-1 win for Colin Osborne against Hunt and a 4-0 win for Owen Bates against Prakash Jiwar in a match that became a comedy of errors, really. 60, Adam Yukar, 74. Hunt here looking to level this match, having lost the first two legs. Double 16 would do it. 42. And you'll be back. And for Rob Collins, he was in a commanding position here with a chance to go 3-0. Ness darts at 38. 59. You may well Adam see Yubar him being pegged back to 2-2. Two, two. Too good from Adam Hunt. Double eight. Game shown good the dart. Leg. And Adam it is all Hunt. square in this one. As Adam Hunt achieves deadlock, making that two-leg deficit disappear. This leg, Rob, to throw first. For those Game who have been with us from the start of this evening's action, the winner of the Premier League night in Glasgow, Michael Smith. 81. Beating Dimitri Vandenberg in the final with an average of 109. 180. Smith had plenty of those. 136. Does have a nine dart finish to his name, Adam Hunt. He hit one at the qualifiers for a European Tour event. 59. Back in, way back in 2013, actually. He hit it. Against Tony West, and bizarrely, do you know who else hit one in that qualifier? Prakash Jiwa. Wow, that is a bit spooky, if Nine ever I've heard spookiness. Mm, both players with perfection in the same event. Both here tonight. 90, Adam Yukar, 170. Fifty-seven, Robbie O'Carr, sixty. Game shot on the fifth leg. Rob High Collins. dart there from Collins, and you think that was going to be the blocker, but the way that he went by it, masterful. Six leg Adam to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Jiwa back in action next. He takes on Colin 57. Osborne. I have to say, Osborne looks like a man with an air of authority this evening. And if you watched both of their first two matches, you'd have to think that Osborne will win that well. One hundred and forty. One hundred. One hundred. Hunt with the darts looking favourite for the leg. If Rob Collins could have just added another couple of eighty five trouble twenties there, he would have levelled it up and Kept Adam Hunt honest. It's one six one going. He's one hundred and twenty nine. Laid up to lead thirty two with Collins way back on two five nine. Although Rob Collins is looking 
to change One that. 40, Adam One hundred and forty incoming. Game uh, another good six start there. Use the barrel well. Could say he didn't have too much of the bed to aim at, but for the first time tonight, we have a, a close encounter. Hunt was beaten four one. Gwa was beaten four nil. Seven and five. This one goes to a decider. Game. game three is three three. Eighty five. Recovery that Rob Collins could have asked himself for there with a dart and the five and the dart and the 20. Double 20 last dart. It's important that we're going to see that that one dart could be by the end of the leg. 93. And once again, he's hit a treble with the last dart. 132. One of those misses there that Adam Hunt was actually able to use in the treble five. Ninety-six. Story of the leg so far is Rob Collins' is third dart keeps hitting a treble. Yeah, he's had a treble twenty, a treble eighteen, and a treble nineteen after two singles with his first two darts. 140 Madam Hunt, he's making his move here. 41. And this time he can't bail himself out with the treble last dart in hand. So Hunt has taken the initiative, has got the advantage. 93. And Hunt returns the compliment with a treble last visit. 93. Is he going to fill it up? Decides against it, plays it properly. 145, Adam Mukla, 145 89. can't be described as too little from Rob Collins, but it might be too late. Double 16 then Game for Hunt. Shot in the match. Adam Hunt. And a break of throw sees him win the match against Rob Collins 4-3. Both players running around that 90, just shy of. 30% on the doubles for Adam Hunt, but it was still enough to get him over the line against Rob Collins. We're heading for a short break. We'll see you on the return.
game four sees Colin and Prakash, whose opening games finish in a flash. The wizard went crazy. She was doubles were hazy. Murph and Scott will describe this clash. Well, I'm just trying to follow that, but I'm not even going to attempt it. Henry Deacon there, a poet, and he knows it. Colin Osborne, the wizard, produced some magic in his opening match against Adam Hunt. Prakash Jiwa, well, he needs to find some magic after that performance against Owen Bates because he really did struggle. Missed 15 darts at double, and the problem wasn't so much the misses, Scott, but the margin of the misses. And that'll be the things that concern him, I think. He's yet to get a leg on the board and he will be wanting to do and put that right in this game pretty quickly. Probably just about the worst opponent in this group to try and do it against. A favourite to win it, Colin Osborne, fresh from that convincing win against Adam Hunt. Had him himself as Managed to put that right by First beating Rob Collins. Collins. First. Game on. So this game four of tonight's ten. Collins will be back to take on Bates in game five. But Colin could carry on what has been a very productive week for him so far. And it might end up being a blessing in 16. disguise that he was pipped at the post by Leonard Gates on leg difference in Group A because if he does carry on like he started and just sweeps past the field in this group, he's going to go to Saturday with an awful lot of confidence. 81. And an awful lot of game time under his belt as well. So, as far as the table's concerned, Aaron Bates, Osborne and Hunt, the three that we thought would be most likely to get out of the group have One all picked up 40. points. Better from Prakash Jua. It was, but the, the big judgment will be when he gets to a double, won't it? That's when he really did start to struggle, Thank or at least are. to finish. We even saw him miss outside the board a couple of times when he was going for single numbers for finishers. Eighty-one. Head downstairs. 83. Just try and take the nine off, but wasn't quite as successful as he'd had hoped. Osborne, if he hits the treble there, will head downstairs for the treble 19 to leave double top. 137. Expertly set up once again from the wizard. It's been a strong point of his play this week. Double top. And Game after 15 darts leg. missed Prakash at double Jiwa. in the previous match, Prakash Jiwa takes out 116 like he's been finishing everything he's left all night. Second leg, Prakash to throw first. Game on. It doesn't make you wonder how he could miss by such a margin in the first match. Well, it could have been Six nerves. Eight. It could have been anything, really. He was saying earlier, this is his first time here, I think. Did he say that he played at Southampton last time, that it was? 95. When I was speaking to him earlier, I can't remember, but it... No, he did come here just before the World Championship, didn't he, Prakash? 95. Oh, yes, he did, yes, that's right. Yeah, he was telling me that as well, yeah. Yeah, great spot, Murph. I should listen. A little bit more, but my wife's always telling me that anyway, so... <laughs> 60. To be fair, some of the darts that double in the first match were closer to Southampton. Put it right, though, hasn't he? <laughs> he surely did, you know, and took a leg against the throw off of Osborne.
28. Four visit from 81. Osborne has seen Prakash wade in, but he's left himself on a bogey. Forty. Well, this game, eh? Colin Osborne was looking a million dollars in his first match. Prakash Jiwa was looking about two pound fifty. Suddenly, 95. roles have been reversed. One hundred and eighty. Prakash Jiwa class seventy. And out of nowhere, Osborne manages. Well, he can't He's miss. He can't miss all of a sudden. A little smirk on his face when he went to the board, saying to himself, this is more like it. So they call into two first. Game on. Eighty-five. Do you like the colour coordination between Prakash's flights and his playing shirt? I'm into that, you know, a bit of coordination, 45. you know, having pink flights and a pink shirt maybe and I'm liking I'm liking Prakash's style here. There's no correlation between his 100. first two performances. I'm just looking at the average from that first match, lower than seventy from Giro, of course, because of the missed doubles. Colin Osborne. I mean, I don't know how much they watch the behind the scenes. There is a TV in there. And I wonder if Colin Osborne's slightly guilty of thinking it was a a foregone conclusion when he walked onto the one hundred the stage here. Last one eighty there, the third of the evening for him. Prakash is average is eighty one. Right up there. A smidge shy of ninety four. Eighty seven. Coming your car one hundred and ten. So one ten to halve the deficit and just halt the GY charge. Ten for tops. Game shot on the third leg. Colin tidy, Osborne. tidy finish there from Colin Osborne. Yeah, the game was just starting to get away from him there a little bit, and class act he is pops up with a one ten. Ball played Prakash to throw first to save a, a second break of throw. Held yeah, throw well there. Been treated to a few three figure finishes 100. tonight already. That's the second. For the Wizard, who had 106 in his opening win against Adam Hunt. Watching Prakash, he puts a 16. lot of chalk on his barrels, out of Keith Della. Yeah, he won't go down that road again. I mean, he's not leaving the board in the same state that Keith did, did he? But it was an interesting point. I think there were some, there were some fair points made in all sides on that one. One of the questions that... that the team at the scene is we're asking is whether or not you know this, this, there was scope to, to clean the board between legs and sets but how might that affect the board boards are pretty durable i i wouldn't it depends whether you 60. started trying to sort of hack away at it with a wire <laughs> brush i mean if you if you went went at it with something a little softer you know a little shoe brush or you know something like that I would imagine that there wouldn't be any damage and probably just the result being better for the viewers more than anything and, and, and your opponent. But I know Keith was a little damaged by some of the comments made. Yeah, it's something he's done all his career, isn't it? And it's 100. something that is part of his game and it, I think it's difficult isn't it we're going to see the new thing with points come into play and there are players that have played with certain points for a long time 
Six so we're now going to have to adapt all of a sudden. It will probably feel hard done by. Cyber Cash. He's on that double top again. Green and he's hit it again. A <laughs> little smile as he goes to the board. A little head shake. As if to tell himself, where have I been? Where was I in that first game? Where was my mind? What was I thinking? Game on. Well, it's the third three-figure finish in this match and the third combo finish for Prakash Jiwa, who's gone from being none from 15 on 95. doubles in his first match to being three out of three in this one. I'm sure someone would have watched his first game and, and maybe back to another 4-0 four white, four whitewash here and how foolish would that have been? 60. One well, out as of we said earlier, 40. we know they can all play. They wouldn't be here if they, if they couldn't. So whatever was going on for Prakash in that opening match has ended now. One out of them, 40. Well, the only little hope that Colin Osborne has to cling on to is that once he started missing in the 81. previous match, he carried on missing. But can you let him take the risk? Can you take the risk of him missing? You know, he's he's obviously feeling on it. I think when you look at his actual mindset, the well, way that he's looking at the board when he's going for those doubles now, maybe he prefers going for them as part of a combination with one last dart in his hand. Um rather than three in hand but the Coming confidence is back it's changed his whole misdemeanor uh, demeanor i mean not misdemeanor a uh, demeanor on the board double six 54 and he's got another combination Prakash finish and based on what we've witnessed in this game prakash g well will take it out double ten And there we go. Explain that. Won. I can't. Non out of 15 on the doubles in his first match. He lost it 4 0. And then Prakash Jiwa goes 4 out of 4. Completely flawless. Four combo checkouts 70, 80, 116, and 118. And averages 97, around almost 30 points higher than that first performance. Jiwa off the mark and in some style. We'll be back after the break for match five when Owen Bates meets Rob Collins.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. And what a difference a game makes for Prakash Jiwa. 97 and a half average, four out of four on the doubles, and two ton plus checkouts in a 4 1 success against Colin Osborne. This next fixture fi uh, means the halfway point of our evening action here in Group B. It's his own Bates take on Rob Collins. Collins, a man who we've seen plenty of here at the Super, Super Series. One of the veterans of this competition and a Super Series legend, as we can see now with his all-time stats. And to give a little bit more perspective on that, as well as describing all the action, let's hand back over to Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, Col uh, Rob Collins, certainly a man in with a squeak of getting through this group at the Super Series. He has a... A long history in this event, having played in the Online Darts Live League and then here in the Portsmouth Live Lounge. We saw some of those stats there. Highest winning average of 105.47 for Collins. Overall average across more than 180 matches of just shy of 85. He has had a 170 checkout. He's 5 180s away. From making it first to leg, he's 200, but first. he has lost more games Game than on. he's won. So again, it just kind of points towards that enigmatic type of player that Rob Collins is. You never really know what you're going to get with him. 85. No, totally agree with that. A determined character on the dartboard. There's no two ways about that. And here comes that determination now. One hundred. This is the fifth match of the ten we'll bring you tonight. Adam Hunt against Prakas G1 next. Speaking of enigmatic, what a turnaround for Prakash tonight. Yeah, it was uh, it was mind blowing, and that average that he had, that ninety seven five two, didn't include one of those at one eighty either. So shows how consistent his scoring was to manage that ninety seven average without a one eighty in the mix. Oh, in your car, one hundred and thirty. Collins not thinking smart there, switching downstairs on the two six two shot, and ended up not in, not leaving a finish despite hitting a treble. It just gives a little bit of a nice. free hit to, to Owen Bates. One hundred and thirty seven. Oh, in your car, forty six. Good recovery shot there from Rob Collins. It's forty six going for Owen Bates. Double eight was his friend yesterday. Rob your car thirty two. I don't know what happened there, but has he heard something? Looking upstairs at, or out the back, I don't know what's gone on there, but something seems to have upset Owen Bates there. No score. Owen your car eight. It is an empty room here. The only other things going on is a practice room, maybe a Game you know, another player's Owen Bates. let a door slam or something, that kind of thing can happen. But Bates is clearly annoyed by something. It hasn't Second leg drop to stopped him winning the leg, though. No, and that will settle him a little bit that he didn't lose the leg. He had an opportunity to lose that leg. And I'm kind of pleased that he didn't. Something outside happened. The, the the odd thing can happen here. I'm not going to pretend that it's you know a completely soundproof building or anything like that. And it's actually for those players who played in Southampton, Bates isn't one of them. They've gone from playing in a room that was more or less silent and soundproof, where into this bigger open space, things can happen like outdoors that can be heard sometimes, like a a siren goes off on the way past just at the wrong time. Different, of course, on Saturday night when you have 26. that constant little hum of noise from the audience. And if you want to be here, part of it, tickets available for free from dartshop.tv. 100. 
Have you ever had one of those moments, Scott, when you've been going for the double for a nine dart finish or something and the uh, PA announcement comes on? <laughs> 97. If, I start, if I start all that shenanigans, we will still be here at the end of the match and everybody will be leaving the stage and I'll still be going on about something that's happened somewhere. I think I'm probably one of the most unfortunate players I had. 40. I had, I had Crisp Gate at the Challenge Tour, which was uh, a little bit annoying, but there we go. I feel like our viewers need to hear more about Crisp Gate. 80. Rob, you require 70. Well, let's see if Rob Collins can clean up a Crisp 70 finish, and then Scott can tell the story. Game shot on the second leg. There we go. Rob Over Collins. to you. Well, I was going for a double, actually, against Wayne Jones um, recently, and... Uh, 3-3, we three, three, pretty crucial Third point of the match. First, and uh, just as I've drawn my hand back to throw me first dart, a double. A crisp packet One goes about boxing. two tables back. You know, it was a big grab bag. It wasn't a little packet. It was a big grab bag. So fairly noisy. And, uh, yeah, I turned around and had a look at the fella. And he looked the other way. And 81. I went back in and started throwing again. <laughs> he put his hand in the bag again. And I missed with three darts. And then, of course, Wayne Jones got out. And then with his darts on the next row, he went 180, 180-140. And I was defeated 5-3. And I just walked by the fella and said, thanks ever so much. Were they tasty? And have you got any left? <laughs> Scott Mitchell's never eaten a bag of Monster Munch since. 100. Yeah, it's one of the things that can go on. It's almost worse, isn't it? It's total silence 100. and having that, that little bit of background noise. Yeah, the phones go off in the background. That that was another good one. Uh, that one was rather annoying. I was on a double there again. That was uh, at the Magic Weekend. And one of the official's phones went off, which was slightly annoying. Ninety-three. Owen Bates will be annoying Rob Collins a little bit just with his performance at the moment because Collins in this match is averaging in three figures after two and a bit legs. Yeah, he might be about to go 2 1 behind. Eight. 52. Rob, you require 41. You heard over there. Referee's mic there, a bit of an old wow. Collins is now on tops. Game shot on the third leg. Rob Collins, Collins is firmly on top in this match. A break of throw of a bait gives him a 2-1 lead. And you can see there, Rob Collins on the 100 average. Fourth leg, Rob to throw first. Game on. As we said with the Prakash... Duo game, 100 average, and he's yet to hit a 180. A right on cue. Commentator's curse or friend, maybe, in this situation. A 180 incoming. 140. Oh, nearly a second. Well, how about one here? How about another here? Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Oh, dear, oh, dear. 99. Ooh. Still only seen one on this stage came from Connor Heenahan. Produced magic. One hundred and forty. On the same day, on the night when Steve Brown had missed a double for a perfect leg that afternoon. Connor Heenahan, not an easy name to say with a mouthful of salted peanuts. What Connor? Yeah. Fifty-eight. You're making me hungry. Stories about crisps now, peanuts. That time of night, I usually get Rob my munchies before I go to bed. Well, let's see if Rob Collins can tuck into a big finish. It's not going to happen. Owen Bates has the very same course in front of him. 81. Owen, you have a car 164. 92. Rob, you require 83. He's 
made a meal of that. And he's rescued it. Double 12. Game well, that is a fabulous get out of jail Rob act, Collins. isn't it, from Rob Collins to lead this match 3 1. Another 15 darts up. Those are the sorts of finishes with that big miss with the first dart that as an opponent you stand behind this leg going to throw first and you start game. to believe it's just not your game, this one. 140. A convincing win for Owen Bates in his opening match, but it could be a crashing defeat in his next. Still has Osborne and Hunt to play as well. 100. Nobody will be ruled out of the race tonight in this group. Never is the case. You can lose all four matches and then turn up the next night and still get through in Group B. It's a very different scenario in Group C where Luke Getty failed to win any of his five and is really out of the picture. 180! This is fabulous stuff from Rob Collins. Edging towards potentially that best average that we flashed up in his stats 100 before this match that was a 105.47 the highest we've seen from Collins here 57 on your car 161 Aaron Bates up there on a 98 is not too shabby either 93 Rob your car, 164. A whopper for the win. Bates will be back. Very similar situation to the previous leg. 84. On your car, 68. Pressure with the last start there from Collins. Both after 12, 68 and 80. Tops up for Owen Bates. 28, Robbie Rucker, 80. So a chance to win the match for Collins. 80. It's there. Two darts at double 10. Second coming in. Oh, 60. he couldn't get any closer. Car, 40. That is not a badly thrown dart. Yeah, that was an excellent attempt. Rob Collins, and you can Game see behind, he Owen really Bates. felt he should have had this match wrapped up, probably partly due to the manner of his first fixture defeat to Adam Hunt in the last leg decider, and he knows that he could have been on Rob his way to back to the, the practice game. room with two points in his pocket here. But he shouldn't be packing, he shouldn't be sort of worrying at any none here, he's on a hundred average. That was that was a shot to break throw. He's now got to let that go and concentrate on holding throw. A good start there with a 140. 85. One hundred and twenty five. Eighty one. Closing in, Rob Collins. Sixty. Unfortunate for more there. Bates looks to be in the same 100. boat. That could have so easily been a 180 there. Three superbly thrown darts. Closes him in. Collins needed that and a 140 here. 100. The look on his face, that was what he was wishing for. And he knows it might mean he only gets one dart at double when he comes back. To go the ball 90. here. Bates does so, leaves 76. himself on 145. So is it one or two to wrap up the match. It will just be the one. Collins ups for tops. 56. And once again, oh, it just 145. brushes the wire. So not this time. Rowan Bates, we've seen him go that way before. Treble 19 and treble 16.
99. Got a little car, 20. What he had left, it's double turn with three in hand this time for Green Rob Collins, and he the sees Rob the game Collins. off. Collins winning 4 2. Getting his first points on the board. Owen Bates suffering his first defeat. An average of 98.47 in the end. Very decent standard from the pair of them. Both players who will feel they're definitely in with a shout of getting through this group. But I think that probably goes for everybody in it. We've seen the best and worst of some. And that was up there with the best of Rob Collins, who will return in a few games' time. But before that, Adam Hunt and Prakash Jiwa do battle after the break. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Five games down, Scott Mitchell is with me up here on the back. Now, usually at this point, I'd ask him to make sense of what we've seen so far. If you make sense of this, do you win Pundit of the Year hands down? Because it's been absolute madness. I think all I've learned this evening is that no two games are ever the same. I think we've seen Prakash go from the bottom to the top of his range. Uh, you know, that last game there we saw... Two nine hundred averages. It's just we're no wiser. Five games in, we're just no wiser into where this group is going to go. Let's have a look at the table. Which even at this early stage, well, it, 
they're all on two points, which probably sums up the evening we're having so far. Do you know what? We had a little conversation this afternoon where if any group could end up with everybody on the same points, it may be this one. And so far after five games, that's what we're seeing. I suppose out of all the players, the, probably the one who's been the most consistent over his two games so far has probably been Colin. Yeah, definitely. And it's taken some ultra magic from Prakash to beat him in that last game 4-1 that he played. So, um, yeah, I just don't know what to say about this. I don't think even the bookies will know what to do about this one. It'd be interesting to actually see how the market moves. I could imagine there might be a fair few five to six each ways now just because yeah. there's no way you could possibly pick one or the other in some of these games now. No, but the, the guys know that they're all important. You know, it's, it's not big. It's only eight games, this group, to actually see yourself through. And we're a quarter of the way through, and we've got another two three groups to go, three three sessions to go. So it's, it's tense, nervous headache time. You know, it's mm -hmm. nervous for the players. They know that it's desperate. Every point is so hard to get in this group. As we have seen so far. Next up for us is Prakash Shiva up against Adam Hunt. Scott's going to make his way down to the commentary box to try and make sense of things alongside Chris Murphy. Chris. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, anything can happen in the next half an hour and indeed for the rest of the evening. Adam Hunt taking on Prakash Jiwa in the first of our final five matches tonight. Both have had mixed fortunes in their first couple of outings. Hunt going down 4-1 to Colin Osborne, who was in turn beaten 4-1 by Jiwa after Jiwa had been beaten 4-0 by Owen Bakes. Meanwhile, Adam Hunt beat Rob Collins 4-3. Collins then got the better of Bakes. I think that kind of sums up that we've got no idea how to separate the players in this group. It was always going to be a hotly contested five in Group B. And we're still on the Best wider like after five. To first. Game on. Paul Hinks, the experienced official, getting the action underway. As Hunt and Jiwa do battle for what would be the fourth time in their career. A pair of them met at Q School 12 years ago now, the first meeting. And then this man, who couldn't hit anything in his first match and now can't miss anything, won that one. As Adam Hunt responds in kind. Jiwa can't follow the maximum. 121. Eighty one. Scott Mitchell has just made his way downstairs. 100. Out of your car, 101. Sat down alongside me. Sorry, Scott, something was in your way then, wasn't it? Yeah, a big bag of crisps, funny enough. 69. A big bag of Chris's crisps. Car, 100. Well, this could be an 11 dart start for Prakash Jiwa, who certainly turned on the taste buds after that sour opening match. 32, Adam your car, 32. Double 16 for Adam Hunt. Game shot on the first leg. A great Adam leg Hunt. of darts to start off this match. 13 dart hold a throw for Adam Hunt. Second leg, Prak has to throw first. Starting to feel that he's playing his way in now. Getting used to the surroundings. 60. I tell you what, as well, the standard across the across the board is steadily creeping up this evening, isn't it? We've seen Colin Osborne post an average of 96, Jiwa post an average of 97. 60. Rob Collins was up in the high 90s as well in that last match, 98 for him. Yeah, and Adam's last game, he won 4-3 with a 90 as well, so... 174. Even Owen Bates losing that last game to Rob Collins with a 94. Yeah, some really 84. good arrows slung tonight. And we still have, including this, five matches to go. And of course.
course, all no, the players they are on two points with one win and one defeat. I did say, didn't I? Did, did I not say, Got Mitchell, this afternoon, that if there was ever going to be a group where all the players could finish on the same amount of points, this group would be it? You did, and we did mention it in commentary, and I did actually mention it upstairs on the balcony. The squeaky deep. One hundred and forty. Bakas will one hundred and twelve. Oh, sound like Matthew Edgar now, aren't I, with the self praise? I'll save it until it happens. I just wanted to put it on record. Here he goes. Can't miss, of course. Hasn't missed for ages. 80. Finally. And the will clear eighty-three. Bakas Jiwa misses a dart at double. Chance of a break here for Adam Hunt. Double nine. Sixty-five. Oh. Bakas will clear thirty-two. See. The wire move. I don't know why I said a wire. You see the blade part of the wire. What What is it called now? Is it? We'll call it a wire. It's just easier for the fans, isn't it? I, I 16. Call it what you like. Adam Hill Clark, 18. I'll call it a wire. Double nine. Game shot on the second In between line. the tram Adam lines. Hunt. For Adam Hunt, who doubles his lead. 2-0. The leg, Adam to throw first. Gewa has had four darts at a double in this game, and that was enough for him to win the match in his 44. last game. Yeah, the trend so far this evening 140. for the Indian is he either never misses or never hits. Fifty-nine. One hundred. Scoring's been very good since that first game. One hundred and forty. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't terrible in the first game, was it? That the doubling did the damage. He did manage to get. 11 three-figure scores in four legs of darts in that match. 24. That had to turn some of the tons into 140s. Still yet to... But only had 180 day. in this match. Didn't have one in his first two. One hundred. Adam Hill class, 78. That was Adam's second of the game. Game shot on the third leg. Adam Hunt. That's really good stuff from Hunt here. 13 data, 16 data, 15 data for a three leg lead. Four leg practice to throw first. Game Indeed, on. and definitely getting comfortable with the surroundings. 60. Not a lot wrong with what Prakash Duo is doing either. On that 90 average, but. Hunt with the 102. 60. It's finishing stats of three out of four as well. Mighty impressive. And that's why 24. that average is right up where it is. Yeah, it is the penultimate match for the pair of them. Giwa still has to face Rob Collins. Hunt will meet Owen Bates. 180. Another one for Paul to call. Adam Hunt's fifth of the evening. 140. Could, should, maybe 91. Would Adam Hunt finish this match 4 0. It will help him greatly in the table on the legs different. 60. Adam Hill Car 170. The legs difference is currently set on minus two. With his two points. 96. And this would help him greatly. Well, this one could be over as quick as a flash. Adam Hunt will come back looking at 74. 177. Under pressure from Prakash. But to get the job done in less than eight minutes here. 
double top to do so. 34, Prakashi will file 40. Game shot on the fourth leg. Prakash Jiwa. The game continues. At 177 at the very right time for Prakash. This leg Adam to throw first. Game on. One hundred and thirty four. Well, it's been a crazy, crazy night here at the Super Series. Who's to say we're not going to see something remarkable here and crack us Jiwa to pull off the greatest of great escapes? Remember as well, both of these players have hit a nine-dart finish in their careers, and both of them hit them on the same day. It would have been some irony, but then the next nine-dart finish to come against that opponent. Massive irony, really, when you think Prakash was struggling to do a 70 average in his first game. 170. Well, suddenly the, the scoring is sensational. And I'm not saying that lightly. From Prakash Trio, we're in this match. Two 180s, two 177s. 100. Prakash, you require 44. And against an opponent playing at the peak of his powers, four tops. Double ten. Game shot on the fifth leg. I tell Prakash you what, Jiwa. this ain't over. Four tops indeed. Prakash was going loco. Six leg Prakash to throw first. Game on. Down in Portsmouth, though, not Acapulco. Ninety-five. He's going crazy down in Portsmouth. He was three behind in this match. Adam Hunt was cruising, coasting. 83. And suddenly, Jiwa back in business, back in the match and threatening to force a decider. 100. One hundred and thirty-four. Adam Hunt's turn to now start peppering that treble nineteen. Well, we mentioned the standard was, was rising, and it, it just keeps getting better, doesn't it? High nineties averages in the last couple of games. Adam Hunt might 59. be the first to go over the hundred mark if he can close it out in the next couple of visits. 105. Cash going nowhere here. He is hanging in. 90. Blackhash, you will call 156. Both using the ball well there. I'd like to see that. Cash really needs a treble visit. 60. Adam will call 155. And that's just evaded him. But he is left on a two data, but I'm sure Adam will start on the ball here. Fifty-seven. Prakash will find ninety-six. So ninety-six to level the match. Does he go double double? A man, who does. a man who couldn't hit a double earlier. Adam now he's so confident he's going for two. But I was expecting him to go the other way round and leave the tops. Well, Adam Hunt trying to leave the tops now. How much can he see? 58. Clattered into that other dart, didn't it? Yeah, we saw the dart move, so... Big, big moments. Game shot on the sixth. And out he Prakash goes. It's a level game, but if Prakash is to win the match, he's going to have to break through here. Seventh and final leg, Adam to throw first. Game on. Adam Hunt led this match 3-0, averaging in three figures after a great start to the game. 135. Prakash Jiwa, who, remember, started this evening like a man who'd never picked up a dart before. 
has hit back, winning the next three legs. 140. On a night where, short of trapeze artists and fire eaters, we've seen just about everything. One hundred. Eighty-five. Good last there. On for cash, it was a over the top, and now fifty-eight. Chasing round to find a treble. Cash really needs another one. One hundred. Didn't need that. 38. Well, it means that to win it, to win this match in which he was leading 3 0 and dominating, he might have to take out the biggest finish of them all. 60. Out of your car, 170. Very much a deep breath and a good look from Adam Hunt. We know he's capable. Drifted just the other side. 132. Prakash your car, 160. Well, to complete the total tungsten turnaround, 116. Treble 20. And double 18. 80. Out of he got his chance. 58. A bit rushed, wasn't it? Hunt splits the 38 Game show and the does match. the right Adam thing Hunt. because he hits it. Superb game of darts from those two lads there. One of those you would have liked to it to gone on and been the best of 11 because it would have gone on. Adam Hunt wins it there, 94 average for him. And not too shabby, 92 from Prakash. 57% on the checkout. Very impressive from Adam Hunt. He moves on to four in the table, and he tops the group thus far. So we head into a break, and we'll see you when we come back.
Good morning and welcome to Friday everyone here at the Modus Super Series. Yes, we have crossed the midnight hour and we have made it into day five of our action sort of here at the Super Series. Next up for us is the battle between Colin Osborne and Owen Bates after Adam Hart won a spectacular match with Prakash Jiwa by four legs to three. A 94 average for Hunt in the win there. Let's hand over to our commentary team. It's like we spoke yesterday. Scott, Chris, all yours. I was really enjoying yesterday's action as well, Henry, so I hope it carries on in the same vein today because it has been one of the most incredible nights of darts at the Super Series I can remember. The standard has been pretty good, but the outcomes have been totally unpredictable. Colin Osborne, a case in point, winning his first match 4-1 against Adam Hunt, a fellow favourite for the group, and then losing 4-1 to Prakash Jiwa, who had lost to this man, Owen Bates, in his first match, 4-0, missing 15 darts at double. Then against Osborne, he hits four out of four. Hunt has now beaten Jiwa to move on to four points, the first man to do so, and the winner of this match will join him. Follow all that? Yeah, bamboozling, I think, is the word we're looking for there. Um, first leg, Colin, did through first. You know, the, the guys are out the back sort of Give chatting on. between themselves saying exactly the same thing you know where is this going to go and uh like i said up on the balcony we're now six games in and none the wiser although adam hunt is up there in group b 43. with four points his legs def difference is minus one which isn't particularly good and 140 you can only see one of these lads, whoever wins this game, going up there with them, but taking over on legs different at the top of the group. Yeah, two points and one leg between all five players so far in this group. 100. The best leg difference is Owen Bates, who's on a plus two, having had that 4-0 win against Jiwa in his opener. And then losing 4 2 to Rob Collins in his second 41. game. So if he wins, he'll be top. Yeah, but as a player, you're not thinking about going through on legs difference. You want to go through on on your points so. alone. So you, you wouldn't be. We're, we're not the cleverest people in the world, dart players, and we wouldn't be looking back at this leg difference. There are one or two that can overcomplicate it, but sometimes it's best to just get your head down and try and win 81. games. And, oh, and, you're and the leg difference will sort itself out. Yeah, absolutely. You can't be thinking about getting two or three legs. Surely you're thinking about getting four, aren't you? It has to be. You have to be that way, because if you try to get two or three legs, you end up only getting one. Bates bidding to break immediately here. Sixty-two. On your car, one hundred and sixty. Sloppy start from Colin after a super start earlier in the evening from Osborne. 80. be really interesting to see what scenario we're in this time tomorrow with three or four games oh, left to play, seeing easy. how many players are still in contention. I would guess that maybe all five still will be. Game shot on the first Owen Bates trying to make Owen a move Bates. here, though, towards the top of the table. He has... Still got Adam Hunt to play as well. So if Bates does win this match, it will mean that at least one Second of the five in this first. group will be yeah. on six points come the end of the evening. If Osborne can win it, we still have the possible scenario that 43. everybody could end up on four. One hundred and forty. My advice at home is to get a cup of tea and settle in to see the outcome of these last four matches. Ninety-six. Forty-five. I have to say, Osborne here is struggling to find 
his scoring boots as yet Six in this match. Eighty. One hundred and twenty six. Eighty five. Sneak the last one in there. Colin takes moves across the old to try and. Coming your car, 151. Chase the travel, and all he's done is open the door. And Osborne has gone and put his foot right in the door. I said, I'm coming through, kid. Well, it's still a, a similar scenario for Owen Bates, although he 91. does have the option of oh, in your car, 131. treble 17 for tops tops here. Goes treble 19. 74, and now he's got a double 16. And what a finish that 15. would have been. Come and he 60. knows it. It's a rare route, but he does like starting on treble 19, doesn't he, on finishes? Owen Bates. Colin Osborne is only getting one at tops. But that's Game all he needs. The second leg, Colin Osborne. A break back from Osborne and... And Bates will be thinking because he had a dart at it. Maybe it could have been his. They're coming to throw first. Game on. Just a reminder of the match is still to come. Six Following eight. this, Prakash G wire against Rob Collins. It is the last encounter of an eventful evening for G wire Then Owen Bates 81. returns to face Adam Hunt before Rob Collins. And Colin Osborne close the curtain on tonight's action. One hundred and twenty five. And that leg seems to have ignited Colin Osborne a bit, but here comes Owen Bates. With his third one eighty of the evening. He is playing at a superior standard to his opponent in this match. 45. No question about that. And you will expect to get more chances if that gulf between them remains. 140. Which it will if he keeps smashing the 60 or the treble 20 area like he is at the moment. 45. On your car, 100. Is winning their mini series this week as well. 2 1 to Owen in terms of matches in Group A earlier in 52. the week. You just do wonder over the course of a week how much those head to heads make a difference. I often think that much is made of head to head stats, maybe too much, particularly if the, the meetings have been so far spread apart. But when you play each other day after day and keep getting beat by the same bloke, it must have some kind of influence. Yeah, it does. Game shot on the and third there we leg. Go. Owen Bates. Owen Bates closes out leg three with a nice little 48 shot. That was a break of throw. Both are going so to throw first. Straight Game back on. after being broken by Osborne himself. Just to highlight that gulf. Between the pair here, 18 points in the averages after three legs. And that is getting bigger. Colin Osborne only allowed one dart double in this game. To his credit, he hit it. Or maybe he should have had 42. two. Obviously a slight mistake on the 60, but he still ended up with shooting it as a result. 43.
really struggling to hunt down that treble twin. As he finds it with the last start in hand on that occasion. When Owen hits that first treble 20, 140. He generally follows it with at least one of the next two. Colin Osborne knows here that he's got to start doing the same. 137. Well, this game is going to pass him by. One hundred. Well crafted ton there from Owen Bates. A couple on the top wire. He knew that he was likely to be able to slide one underneath. But just when it looked like Osborne was out of the leg, Owen, he 83. gets himself back into it, tapping on Bates' shoulder. Bates wants the ball. 58. Colin Newcar, 87. Every treble 17 here, I'd imagine. Yep. 20 for the ball. It's double five. He's hit the treble. 77. On your car, 25. That was only Osborne's second dart at double in this match. Well, it will only be one for Bates this time. It's his turn to slip. 13 remaining. Double four. 21. Colin Every Yorker, time it looks like he's getting away, he just ushers Osborne back in. No score. Oh, in your car, four. Well, that's the wrong bed, Colin. Game shot well, on that's the That's a good way. dart for Owen, Owen Bates, Bates, and it's an encouraging dart for Bates because the way his darts lie. Double two is a nightmare for him, and we've actually seen him earlier in the week. His reactions to that double never looked like to hit it, so that may be just a sign there that he's keeping his composure a little more as the week goes on. Yeah, if I remember Does rightly, he's trying to get away from it on one occasion, in fact, going for the three for double one. So overcoming some demons there. One out of by... 40. Hitting that double two. When Osborne, the wily old campaigner that he is, jumps in with the 140 to say... 134. Not quite going anywhere just yet, young man. Bates follows up with a beautiful 134. Osborne is back. 80. In the, the lipstick. Wayward with dart one and three. Well, Bates looking to close out 16. the clash. And just a reminder of what we said earlier, it does mean that there will be a clear league leader at the end of the evening if Owen Bates wins this match because he has to face Adam Hunt. 123. There's a chance for Bob Collins as well to get to six points. He makes Prakash Jiwar. Colin Osborne. 100. We'll looking to stop him in the final match, but this one's not over yet. That's one thing we've learnt tonight. Ninety-four. So Ninety-five. Come your car. Sixty-four. Now odds on favourite for this one, as he gets his first go. That's a finish. It's double top. 44. Oh, you were Usually a target that he enjoys. But he won't enjoy now having to wait and watch. In fact, he won't watch. He'll just wait. Now he watches. And he'll be very pleased with what he's seen. 80. Come to your car, 20. Quite clearly favouring double 16. Owen Bates, and it's 20 now for Osborne. Right on the wire. That dodgy double five. No score. Owen car 32. First to score on purpose to go back to 20. Should he get a chance? Bates gets his go at double 16. Determined to leave it. Now be determined to hit it and slam the door shut. 
in Colin Osborne's face. And there it is, a 4-1 win for Owen Bates, who marches to the top of the table, making a move, a second dominant win of the night. He beat Prakash Jiwa 4-0 earlier in the evening. He beats Colin Osborne 4-1. Osborne's level really dropped as the night has gone on, and he will be looking to try and bookend his night with wins when he faces Rob Collins in the last match of the night. Collins is in action next, however, as Prakash Jiwa plays his final fixture. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. top international tournament in amateur darts which saw five different nations represented at champions week last time out will we see india or america possibly at champions week this time around because we do have the likes of prakash Yuva, leonard gates and larry butler in the field this week and it is prakash Yuva who we're going to see in our next match it's our eighth game of the evening as he takes on bob collins and that's going to be watched in the company of chris murphy and scott mitchell 
Thank you, Henry. Yes, we'll take this moment to update you with where we are at with this week. One thing is for certain, Leonard Gates will be at finals night on Saturday. If you want to see the American Ace dance on the stage and play some decent darts on the stage as well. Tickets available from dartshop.tv. 7.30 the action gets underway and the tickets are free of charge. John Brown is as good as there, having put himself in a perfect position in Group C, winning all five of his matches in the daytime session on Thursday. He will get his campaign back underway, 9.30 a.m. Friday morning. Conan Whitehead is sitting in second place in that group, tied on six points with Callum Francis. It's starting to look like a battle between those two. But in this group, well, it's very, very difficult to, to work well, anything out. Owen Bates and Adam Hunt have both won two of their Game three on. matches. Everybody else has won one. Rob Collins, though, has only played two. So Prakash Jiwa is determined here to try and finish with a 50% strike five. rate and what's been a bizarre balmy night for him. Rob Collins will still have Colin Osborne to play in the final match of the evening. Between that, the top two meet. 80. Rob Collins had a 98 average in the last match, and he'll be looking for another one of those. 100. Just looking for that consistency again, I would have thought, really. One hundred and thirty-four. And he was edged out by Adam Hunt in his opener, but then got the better of Bates, who we've just seen, of course, thrash Colin Osborne. So Rob Collins, you would feel eighty-five. I mean, it's daft just trying to make any predictions, but he looks like he can be in the mix, doesn't he? Come the end of Friday night's play. One hundred and forty. I can see this being another group where we're not really going to know till match 19 or 20 tomorrow night who exactly is going where. 100. Drop your car, 147. 17 will be the target. Double 18 will be the finish. 111. Would have been for a 147 break. What we'd need then would be the nine data, and we'd have everything. 57. Drop your car, 36. I think you're right. That's probably all, possibly all we're missing, but... Game shot on one the first dart leg. 36 will do. Rob Collins here with a 13 dart opening leg against the throw. See Prakash there just rubbing some chalk onto his barrels. Second leg, Rob, to throw first. The 147 break there. He thinks he's playing snooker, chalking the darts up. I think if you look closely, there's 57. the odd remnants of what he's been doing on the board. 81. Uh, we can see it close up on the barrels and the board there from... Prakash Jiwa, the Delaresque chalk. 45. 100. I think you can 90. have whatever opinion you want on a world champion, Chris, myself, as long as it's the right one. Don't have no problem with me, pal. 100. I'll, I'll give my opinion when you're on the hockey. I, I don't do it when you're sat next to me. 100. Pretty safe these days, mate. I've gone past the days of watching my games back. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, all my early ones I used to watch back. 
You must watch that World Championship win back a few times still. Does it still get the old juices flowing? To be fair, I've only ever watched it a couple of times, probably right the way through, but it crops up every now and again in January, the, the, the winning moment, and uh, 96. still feels like yesterday and still feels like uh, hairs on the back of your neck still stand up. You don't know whether you're going to hit it or not. You know what, I'm, I'm not just 99. saying this Robbie because Carl, you are sat next to me, but it's one of my favourite winning moments because you were so respectful of the man you were playing. He didn't really want to celebrate. He had to encourage you to do so, didn't he, Martin Adams? Yeah, very much so. It was, um, at the time, Martin was the man, you know, the three-time the second leg. Rob Collins. world champ. And if you're going to be a world champ and beat somebody, then you want to beat the man. And, and that was Martin at the time. Yeah, great memories. Great moment there for Rob Collins, taking out that 1-1-3. Like on. So good, he thought he'd just walk up and throw again. Peter Manley-esque, <laughs> some would say. Paul Hinks having flashbacks up there. One on I won the ball. I won the ball. There you are. Just this reminding year. Rob Collins that he's in this game. Not only am I throwing first, pal, but I'm going to throw in a 180 for good measure as well. 100. Prakash is one of the guys I only met just recently. 94. I've seen so much of him and, and, and heard so much about him, but we'd never ever cross paths and he's he's quite a character he really is uh he, he has fun with his darts you, you know there won't 60. be a, a game of darts that gets this fella down for long he is uh he's a very likable character is the apache yeah 52 years of age lives in rugby 137 prakash your car 161 looking for a big finish here Sixty. That was one of the things we established that we were both the same age. And uh he graciously said I looked younger than him, but I'm I'm not so sure about that. He was just being kind, I think. One hundred. Prakash will car one hundred and one. Has a dipped his toe in the water on the World Seniors Tour. Maybe we'll see him on the Seniors T V events at Game some point. And if he can do that kind Prakash of thing, then they'll be very competitive in them. Actually, yeah, I'm a firm believer he would. He would. I think he, he would thrive. It would be his sort of atmosphere. Ball flag Rob to throw first. Game quite on. Quite a friendly out back in the back room of reminiscing of the of the old times and some of the old incidents that happened. 140. Yeah, I do like Prakash Giwar, but he's he's not Apache on you, Scott. 35. We did have the stories earlier where he had somebody ask him why his nickname is the Apache. <laughs> and he was in the back room and says, because I'm Indian, innit? 135. Well, he's been, I think, the easiest way 99. to describe it is up and down this evening. We're seeing evidence of that in this match. Previous leg kicked off with a 180. This leg kicked off with just 35. 24. Yeah, I think it's fair to say we've seen some of the best of Prakash and, and we've seen some of the worst of him as well. But the worst of him looks to have been behind him in that first game yeah, in a weird way you, I never thought I'd be saying this after seeing that first match when he was given a towel in Bayern Bates and missed all of those darts at double 100 if he does come out with just one win he can probably feel a little bit hard done by yeah the way he's played since that game I would say yes he has 60 Rob your car 102 it was that close encounter with Adam Hunt, the 4-3, that might even prove to be the pivotal point for the pair of them in this group. 
78. Nicely recovered there by Rob Collins. Easy to have lost his head when he missed the first start. 96, Robbie Carr, 24. Good counting again from Bakash, but double 12 incoming for Collins. Now it's threes. 21. Left three. Bakash, your car, 170. It's the kind of night where this happens, isn't it? Rob Collins left on three. Prakash Jiwa with three in hand, looking at the 170. He won't on this occasion, but three is a very, very awkward finish. It's like that 60 next to it, but with much more jeopardy. Your first start can always be in the way as well. One. Prakash Jiwa 65. So, big chance here for Prakash. You go 2-2, two, two and he's hit the 25 with ease. 55, Robbie it wasn't Ocar, two. so easy on the other two at the double. No score. Prakash Ocar, Fetch the underside ten. of the wire, and Rob Collins will feel like this is a leg he's thrown away rather than one that Jiwa has gone and won himself, should he find the double. He does the same thing. No score. Robbie will car two. Game shot on the fourth leg. Rob Collins. <laughs> Taken out eventually by Rob Collins there. And as as those uh, as those legs go on, you just it's just relief when you when you hit the double. Fifth leg Prakash to throw going first. on and on In. and on. You just want it out the way. 81. We have seen a little downturn in standard since the midnight hour pass. Do start to wonder if there is fatigue. 100. Question, I guess. I always wonder is those Group A players how difficult it is to make that switch from playing from 9:30 in the morning to, to 10 p.m. in the evening. Colin Osborne particularly started looking pretty fresh, but in his previous match was anything but. I think it probably depends on what you've done with yourself during the day. Okay. Whether you've been out and grabbed a little bite to eat, whether you've had a little wander around and out, grabbed a bit of fresh air, or whether you've taken as much time as you can to, to stay in bed and, and recuperate. 84. I know which one I'd go for, but I don't have to get on the stage and Try and throw the darts. One hundred on eighty. The clue is where I'd be. Rob Collins has just put three in. Bed. Thirty-six. Rob your car. One hundred and forty-one. Nothing too sleepy about that. One eighty from Rob Collins. And now he's on a 1-4-1 one, one for the match. 62. Just checking with Paul Hinks what he had remaining. 62 is the answer. And that means 32 to win when he returns. And for Cast, you are in big trouble now. 180. Could that 180 be the last three darts of this match? For cash. Game shot on the match. Rob Collins. Collins clinches it. A 4 1 win for Rob Collins. And the man of steel is making his move in this group B. He joins Owen Bates and Adam Hunt on four points towards the top of the table. Prakash Jiwa's work is done for the night. He's bottom on two points at the end of his evening. And Bates and Hunt will go head to head next to see who will move outright for the lead.
Welcome back to the Mojo Super Series. We've just seen a 4-1 victory for Rob Collins against Prakash Jiwa with an 88.6 average and a 113 high checkout. Just two more matches to go then on our Thursday evening session here at the Super Series. It sees Adam Hunt up against the man who's won two, or oh, made it to two Challenge Tour finals, should I say. Owen Bates up against Adam Hunt is our penultimate game of the evening. And our brilliant duo in the commentary box is Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Thanks, Henry. Yes, and in one of those runs to the finals of the Challenge Tour, Owen Bates ran into Adam Hunt in the quarterfinals. He beat him 5-2. He stuck in a 98.35 average. So the hunter will be fully aware of the talents of the master. Indeed he will. It was just a few weeks ago, so it's all still fresh in the minds of both players. But the format was slightly longer than this. It was first to five. As we know, Owen Bates had a fantastic first weekend on that challenge tour. It was back-to-back -back finals for Bates. First leg going to throw first. It was the second on. one, which he lost to Thibaut Tricol, in which he met Hunt in the last eight. Having beaten Tricol in the semis. Just stepping back there, I think a couple of times today, and I think it's something that will be spoken to the players about, but the, the practice room has been a little bit loud and jovial and maybe spilled over a little bit outside of it. And Owen Bates has just had to restart. He seems to have been the one to notice it more than anybody. I think we've seen that on a couple of occasions this evening that he has noticed it. And like you say, 60. the room is so quiet. You can hear a pin drop. 135. We were talking earlier about things that put, put you off. Commentators is another one, and one of the famous bits of footage on YouTube you can watch is Ted Waddell, isn't it, with a, a door open on the commentary box. Putting Phil Taylor off at a nine dart attempt. Yeah, Phil, Phil looking at the referee going, I can sit, I can hear Sid, I can hear Sid. Brilliant memories of a, a true great in this sport. Really, that might have been Circus Tavern. 133. Yeah, it was John Grimm, was it? I think he can hear you, Sid. I'm <laughs> just saying sort of quite timidly next to him. Wonderful memories. One to look for after the tonight's darts. On your if you're like me and just constantly watching darts footage on YouTube. Game shot on the first leg. Owen Bates on might Bates. be watching his performances back because he's really flexing his muscles in this group. I remember some other commentary lines. Second leg out into third Fry. first. Game on. Mentioning that he felt being in with the two commentators he was sat between, he felt like a pig in Chardonnay. 57. Another line that people just do not forget. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. 131. 123. You get involved on social media if you've got favourite moments, favourite memories, lines of the great commentators. Tell us what they are at MSS Darts. The 100. Place to tweet into. You can get me at Chris Murphy 180. I believe you're at Scotty Dog Mitchell. Is that correct? Well, that's it. Might be Scotty Dog Dart. I don't know. Yeah, 40. I'll check. Forty-two. Yeah, Scotty Dog Dart. There I've we got, go. I forget because I've got Instagram, I've got Twitter, 60. I've got Snapchat. And they're all slightly different. Modern man, you see. Well, yeah. Left my phone on the side one day, and my daughter put them all on there. So yeah, we'll go with that. Fifty-seven. 
Or when you were caught one. Can Owen Bates go with this? Will the leg go with this? Not to be. So Adam Hunt will get a chance to get this leg in the ledger, but it would only be for a hold of throw and parrot it one apiece. Another in there. There's loads of room. Doesn't matter. Bullseye. 97. Owen you were caught 36. Bates gives himself the little come on. Can he get by that one? Oh, lovely shot there. Zooming Being in as the, the dart line. goes in. Great work from the production team. But even better work from Owen Bates for actually hitting it. Third leg going to throw first. Game on. Yeah, full credit to the team there. If we can see all the targets for the rest of the night, we'll be very happy. It's all about doing the simple things right Seven initially, hit. isn't it, Murph? And then, you know, doing your own job and all that. One hundred and forty. Well, this is the penultimate match of the first 60. night in this group. The last one is Rob Collins against Colin Osborne. Everybody, of course, still in contention, but whoever wins this game is going to be in a very strong position on six points. And therefore, potentially, four clear for fourth place, unless Osborne can lift his level and get the better of Collins. Therefore... There'll only be two points between first and fourth. And remember, this group is all about finishing in the top three. 95. Ninety-six. One hundred and thirty-one. Oh, in your car, 135. There's a start on ball here, and he's hit it. 85. Back in on the ball. 119. Out of your car, 40. That's good stuff. A couple of bullseyes to leave double eights. But he's Game not going to get a go at leg. it as Hunt manages to break. Yeah, he was under pressure there as well. Adam Hunt to break. Fourth leg, Adam to throw first. Game on. 134. Yeah, visit, and that's exactly what he's got. Well, enjoying this late night reminiscing of the late great Sid Waddell. Just came out of nowhere, really, that chat. But 16. we are starting to get a few tweets in. One from Jock on Twitter saying his favourite classic quote from the legend Sid Waddell was, it's so quiet in here you can hear the vinegar sizzling on the chips. And you would be able to hear that in here if uh, we could get hold of any chips. I wish we could. 91. Indeed. As a young lad, I was obviously... A big Sid Waddell fan, but I was also a big Dave Lanning fan, being a Speedway boy, and Dave doing all the Speedway chat and everything, and 60. the Speedway one-liners, his darts one-liners were also equally, and him and Sid just complemented each other perfectly, and were just great people for the game at the right time when we needed them. Yeah, absolutely. Echo those sentiments. And, uh, Memories will live on in those lines. 100. Out of your car, 40. Game shot on the fourth leg. Adam Hunt. The top is Adam Hunt. Remain in the hunt in this match. 2-2. Two -two, having lost the first couple of legs. Remember, the winner of this game will be top of the table, at least temporarily. Fifth leg going Head to the first. Rob game. Collins's final clash of the night. It'll be three from four for one of this pair. A 58. very good evening's work. Ooh, 
100. Ninety five, ninety five, eighty five. Just a little grimace there from Owen Bates. He knows that slipper just made it a little bit trickier for him in the next visit. Forty-one. Kind of got away with it a bit there. I'll stay there. One hundred on it. Yeah, it was a bit tricky, but they made it simple, didn't they? Don't have to worry about switching when you're firing the first couple of darts in the treble. Just follow it with the third. Adam Hunt looking to do something similar. One hundred thirty-three. Oh, in your car, eighty-three. Decent standard this one, four legs, almost five legs into this match, completed and both players averaging in the 90s. Bullseye here for Bates. 58. Adam Yukar, It'll be bullseye. And another bullseye for Adam Hunt. Well, he needed at least a 25 to have a chance. I know in Bates now needs the 25. 52. On your car, 25. Take the lead. So double eight coming in, takes a little step back, Ala Rob Cross, Game shot and the nails the oh, double base. eight with his first dart. 17 dart, hold of throw there for Owen Bates. Six Not like too shabby in the situation. You see Adam Hunt actually with a higher average in the game. 58. Forty-two. The door is ajar. One hundred and twenty-one. What have you made of Adam Hunt's first outing at the Super Series? This is his last match. He was beaten heavily in his first, but it's been 59. a good bouncing back. That win against Rob Collins in his second game actually looks even better now, doesn't it, based on what we've seen from Collins since? Yeah, very much so, and Adam has 97. kind of maintained that 90 average from that point. He had a 94 against Prakash. Back up the 90 from Rob Collins. He just started a little slowly, just getting used to the surroundings. And ninety-five. He really looks odds on to make this 3-3 three, three and we're going to have a one-leg shootout in which Adam Hunt is going to have to break. 140. Owen Adam Bates is thrown from the looks of things, but Bates not done in this leg just yet. No need to stay there. Double eight then. 130 doesn't go, so Owen Bates gets a chance just to pile some pressure on this 16 for Adam Hunt. Seventy-six. Adam Yukar, sixteen. Hasn't really done it. This is getting trickier by the second. Game shot on Great the last leg. dart. Now you can Hunt. see the lean of that second dart over the bed, but it didn't deter Adam Hunt, who does force a decider. So easy to drag that last dart when you've got two so Seven close final leg in. To throw first. Game on. That was great composure from Adam Hunt. 60. Well, Bates has a throw, but suddenly Adam Hunt will be sensing blood here because no treble spells trouble. 97. Ninety-seven. Neither player is going to be totally disappointed with 
the points haul they come away with tonight will be at worst winning half of the matches. 55. But whoever wins will be sitting pretty going into tomorrow's or tonight's, if we're going to be totally accurate about it. 94. Friday evening's action. And sleep a little bit easier as well tonight. The action in this 57. group resuming at 10 p.m. Usual places, Sporty Stuff TV for viewers in the UK. You can watch anywhere in the world on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. But before that, about 9.30 a.m. UK time for the conclusion of Group C. One hundred and forty. Well, this is pretty perfectly poised, isn't it? Owen Bates on a simple two darter and waiting. Adam Hunt with one five two in front of him. Those last two darts were crucial. In the outlook here for Owen Bates. One hundred. Oil car 58. Excuse me, young man. I'm trying to see the score from Paul Hinks there. Little nod. A little pause. A big dart. Game and a big hit Owen Bates. from Owen Bates, who defeats Adam Hunt and puts himself top of the table. Six points, three wins from four tonight for the master who is at the top of the pile. Rob Collins can go level with him if he defeats Colin Osborne in the final match of the evening. Disappointment, really, for Adam Hunt, who has kept up that level, an average north of 90 once again. But it's a 50% win ratio for him on night one of this group. For Owen Bates, three from four, leaves him in pole position. One more match to come as Collins faces Colin after the break.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Owen Bates has rounded off his night with a win. He got the better of Adam Hunt in a decider by four legs to three. Hunt actually having the higher average of 91.75, but it was Bates four for nine on the doubles, which ultimately what won him that particular clash. Well, we're going to round off our Thursday evening action now with the battle between Rob Collins and Colin Osborne. And in the commentary box for one final day here on Tungsten Thursday, here's Scott Mitchell and Chris Murphy. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. It's... Uh Game 10 of the evening, last game. Rob Collins has a chance to head up to six points with Owen Bates. Colin Osborne won't be wanting that to happen. He's on two and in fourth place in the group. This particular moment in time, and he knows that he cannot probably let this one slip if he has any inhibitions. of making that top three. We're running out of games. First leg is Rob to throw first. Yeah, it will be a bit of a Game split on. at the bottom of the table if Colin does lose this one. But of course, the, the chase is just for third place. So it looks like it's going to go deep into the evening. All we do know is that if Colin's wins, then he joins Bates on six points and those two would become ones to beat and you'd expect because of how close the group is that they get through with just a win or two 100 tomorrow that pair let's not forget this the reverse fixture so these two will open up tomorrow evening so it's two head to heads back to back with a few hours in between Twenty-six. Sixty. Now meeting outside of the Super Series for this pair. Well, they may have clashed on the Challenge Tour, but haven't crossed paths away from 100. Portsmouth or previously Southampton. Fifty-eight. All right, a KG opening twelve darts from Rob Collins. Allowed Colin Osborne get the jump on him. Seven. Colin your car, 135. Well, no need for Osborne to be bothering with any fireworks and bullseyes. After that seven from Collins left him outside finishing 95. range. 95. Collins will just be looking to get his arm loose and wonder where these were. One hundred and forty. A couple of throws ago when he desperately 40. needed them, but Osborne back for double top. Game shot on the first leg, Colin Osborne. Nothing silly with the first one there. Used his experience. People that know darts would know that. Second leg, Colin to throw first. Game on. Colin Osborne is looking to leave 100. this group almost as tight as it could have been if he can win this match. It will be three players on four, one on six, one on two. 140. And if one result had gone the other way, then we could have all had all four, all five players tied on four. One hundred and forty. 
before the evening started or during the first match, Scott, I did ask you who you thought would make it through Osborne Hunt and Bates was the answer. 92. Have you seen anything from anyone to change your mind? Well, Rob Collins has put himself in the mix, hasn't he, with, with the averages that he's been doing. Uh, he was lost that. 60. Game set Adam Hunt early doors. After that, he's been pretty prolific. It would be as good a night as you could have, really, with 140. a defeat in there, because that defeat was only 4-3 for Rob Collins, so he's been very much competitive. The only worry for Rob, for me, tomorrow is fatigue. As we mentioned earlier, he will go home, he'll go to sleep, go and do a day's Dr. work, and then come back on Friday evening. All 34. the players that have travelled to this 66. area will probably spend a good portion of Friday in bed. Yeah, resting. Can this rest in double three? 60. Can't. Rob, you can 95. Collins that, for me, back. is the problem with that direction. You're going to end up on double three should your first dart go wrong at double six. Game shot well, a rescue the act. Leg. Rescue Rob from Rob Collins to tidy up this match. Third leg, Rob, to throw first. Game on. It was a strange route in the first place on 95, going for the, the 15s. 100. But he got there in the end, and it's all square in the end. Yes, he most certainly 96. did. 96. You can't question how the man gets it, as long as he gets it. One hundred and forty. One hundred and nineteen. Call that a rescue visit when you hit the two treble nineteens after a big fat five. Eighty five. Forty-three. Got the three off. That's about all you can say about that visit. You can't rule out Rob Collins, though. How many times during visits, during legs, he looked like he's messed things up and then just rescued it. Forty-five. Rob your car, one hundred and forty. He might have just had a huge helping hand from Colin Osborne there. Because even though he's not taking this out, it's a big ask for Osborne to clean up what he's left. 40. This Tommy time on the 135, I imagine he would be starting on the bullseye. He would have to with Rob Collins sat on 100. Well, he goes, tre yeah, he goes treble 19. It's 79. It's car, fair 100. enough, but Colin Osborne loves double top. I'm surprised at that route. Off the barrel, surely. Game shot on the third one. Yeah, leg. tidy Rob visit. Wait, right Collins is clenching his fist as he goes to the board. I think he knows the importance of this game. 12 play Collins to throw first. Game on. Well, just a recap of the evening's action 81. then. Colin Osborne started in style, a 4-1 win over Adam Hunt. The 
opening match of the evening. That was followed by that bizarre bout between Prakash Jiwa and Owen Bates, in which Jiwa missed 59. 15 darts at double. He then returned two games later to beat Colin Osborne 4-1 without missing any darts at double. Between that, Rob Collins was defeated by Hunt before beating Bates 4-2. Hunt got the better of Jiwa 4-3. And 4-1 wins for both Bates and Collins against Osborne and GUR, respectively, before that match we just saw when Bates beat Adam Hunt 4-3 to put himself 64. top of the table on six points ahead of Collins and Hunt on four. Osborne and GUR each have two. One hundred and twenty-five. One having a little smile to himself there. Just like to enjoy himself while he's playing. 137. Well, he's done well here because his best match of the night, without doubt, was his first. And in his last match, his level really, really slipped. 95. And he was beaten heavily by Owen Bates. But he's up in the 90s again here. And when he comes back, he'll be looking at 120 to tie up this... Tussle at 2-2. Two, two. 180. Colin, your car, 120. Oh, Colin sits his third 180 of the evening. It's now down to Osborne. Can he sneak over that? Yes, he does. It's double top. It's one that he does like to favour. 80. But it hasn't been Rob his friend today. Options for Rob. And that's the problem with that route. Double four. He was trying to Go earn himself off. two darts at double. He ended up with one you. and he's coming back. Well, if he's coming back, he's coming back for the same equation. And having to do the hard work all over again. I wonder if he'll change which direction he goes. Not many do come back when Colin Osborne wants tops with three darts in hand. He shot him in four flat. He only Colin needs Osborne. one. It's all square. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting debate. I quite like the debate on the 61 route. I haven't quite made my mind up about it. So it's like Rob to throw first, game on. 61, 65, etc. Going for the, the ball 25. The school of thought for many, I know yourself included, Scott, is that often you're going for the bullseye and what hoping to miss. And Rob Collins doesn't miss. And that, by the way, is his 200th, 180 at the Moda Super Series. 45. Nice little milestone. Is this going to be 201? 140. Well, that would have been something, wouldn't it? To spark off a nine dart finish. But Paul Nicholson was telling me that when he goes for those kind of finishes, the 60 ones and the 65s, he actually does aim for the 25 and he aims for the left hand side of it and the reason for it is that all of the smaller numbers that can make it more difficult 57. for him say on 65 he can hit a four he can hit a one he can hit a two are all on the right hand side yeah that's not the first time i've heard of people doing that i mean i i think we all try to aim at one side one or the other but Rob your car, 124. Um, very plausible for it to go that side. I'd, I'd never really looked at it like that before, so I think I've learned some of it. And Rob Collins is 84. Really putting in a power leg here. On tops after 12, having kicked off with that milestone maximum. 100. It's going to be under some Robert pressure because Osborne only needs one treble to get yourself a stab at a he double. But the fifth leg, Rob Collins. Collins straight out, one dart. He averages once again. Six leg, Collins is still first. Collins is on 89 and a bit. Osborne on 92, 92. 100. Yeah, decent enough stuff from the pair of them. Ninety-three. This will be the first fixture 
in Friday night's action, 10 p.m. live on Sporty Stuff TV. One hundred and thirty six. We're only about eight hours 96. away, Scott, from the start of the Friday morning session. Make sure you have your cornflakes. Yes, I've got my breakfast to go in the morning. Cornflakes, orange juice, and some sort of chocolate based 100. condiment. Come I think. Got 85. Double six to go level. And six Colin Osborne, Colin Osborne takes that 85 shot out. 12 dart leg to go 3-3. Three, three. Seven and final leg drop to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Fourth last leg decider of Group B this evening. 95. So will it be Collins or will it be Collins? 140. Taking the points in the last match of the night. If it is Osborne, he will join Rob on 95. four, along with Adam Hunt. If Collins wins, he will join the league leader in Bates on six. And in fact, it will be very close between them, just one leg in Bates's favour. 91. One hundred. But are we going to sign off in style? Well, it won't be the big fish finish. Fifty-seven. But it might have to be a three-figure finish for Rob Collins because Osborne surely will be on something makeable after this. One hundred and thirty four, Roger Carr, one hundred and thirteen. He's going to get his dart, and it's at tops. Ninety three, Colin Yokar, seventy seven. And now Colin Osborne should get at least one. He gets two. And he hits, and, the match. and Colin, Colin Osborne. Osborne wins the final clash of what has been a bit of a crazy night of the Super Series. All sorts going on. Missed doubles, big averages, big performances, and nothing to choose between the five players really in the field. That win for Colin Osborne, an average of 98.76 as well in it, means that he goes level on points with Rob Collins and Adam Hunt. There are just four from top to bottom. Bates in pole position going into Friday evening's action. It will be a double session tomorrow, but still today it's time to get some analysis from Scotty Dog Mitchell, who is on the balcony with Henry Deacon. Chris, thank you very much indeed. And Scott, when he came up to the balcony, said, what a standard. It has been tonight, yes. It uh, The finishing has been great. The odd legs have got away from each other. It's just been quality all evening. It really has. We can have a look at the table now following the completion of all of our games this evening in Group B. Now, Owen Bates really kicked on in the second half of that session, didn't he? Yeah, he really did, and, and, and he leads the group on merit. You know, he leads the, the table on merit. Uh, three wins 
out of four in that group is, is really nothing to be sniffed at. It really is a strong suit, isn't it? Just a couple of assessments on the, the likes of Rob Collins, Adam Hunt and Colin Odsborne, who are all on four points. Yeah, I think it's all still to play for in there. You know, we, we've still got to get three of those go and leave the group. And I think we're not going to know till very late on, once again, who the three are going to be that head through to Saturday. And in a few hours' time, Group C will recommence, where it's John Brown, who is top of the group on 10 points. But the race we're looking forward to there is that for second spot. Yes, indeed. That's gonna, not going to show its head as well till, till towards the end. We have two great groups tomorrow, two great finishes tomorrow. But again, overnight, we're still no closer to knowing who's going to be in that Saturday final. Best get some shot eye, shouldn't we? It's not a bad idea. So we are going to depart, but we will see you bright and breezy at 9.30 a.m. here on Sporty Stuff TV and the Modus Super Series YouTube channel, where in Group B, Owen Bates, well, he's the master. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye for now.